Hey there, future GRE test taker. Lene here. I'm one of the content creators at Magoosh, and in this video, I'm going to share with you some of our students' favorite mental math techniques. What makes these techniques so popular is that they are tried and true methods that have helped countless students approach the GRE math section, also known as the quantitative reasoning section, both confidently and efficiently, making slogging through those multiple step tricky GRE math problems a lot more manageable. Also, they're kind of fun. So let's get to it. Our first trick is all about how to quickly divide by five by actually dividing by 10. Now, while dividing by five is pretty easy with smaller values, it tends to become less easy with larger values that we're less familiar with. But most of us feel pretty confident in our abilities to divide by 10, even when confronted by very large numbers. And that's the beauty of this trick. Instead of working out the division by hand and figuring out the traditional division by five method, or reaching for the GRE's less than impressive on-screen calculator, we can make the operation a simple two-step process. To see how this works, we're going to use the example of 305 divided by five. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna double the number we want to divide by five. So in this case, we're gonna take 305, double it, and now we have 610. Now we have one step to go, and that is literally just to divide the result by 10. So divide 610 by 10 to land at 61, and that's it. You are done. Here is another one. Let's say that we had 2035 that we needed to divide it by five. So our first step is to double 2035, which is gonna give us 4,070. Now, the next step and the last step is just to divide that by 10. So step 10, we land at 407 and we're done. Try this out the next time you need to divide a large or large-ish number by five. Now let's move on to our second trick. Our second trick is all about using doubling and halving as a multiplication shortcut. This technique is especially useful when multiplying larger numbers. The idea is to double one number and have the other, thereby making the calculation simpler. Let's dive in with an example. Let's say that you had to multiply 14 times 25. Instead of directly multiplying 14 by 25, we can Take 14 and cut it in half to get seven and double 25 to get 50. Now we've converted this to seven multiplied by 50. Most people will arrive at the answer to seven times 50 faster than 14 times 25. And that's because we've now made it so you only have to multiply the seven by the five, giving you 35, and then add the zero to your solution to give you 350. Let's talk about why this works. Well, doubling and halving works because the process changes the quantities involved without changing the overall product. By having one number and doubling the other, we're essentially splitting the quantity into smaller parts and then combining them in a different way, maintaining the same total value. It's based on the associative property of multiplication, which is a topic for another day. Now, here's a challenge for you. Pause the video and see if you can work out 16 times 21 using the doubling and halving technique. All right, if you halved 16, you got eight, and if you double 21, you got 42. So now you just have to calculate eight times 42, and that equals 336. If that's the answer you got, nicely done. If not, go back and carefully check your arithmetic steps, and I bet you'll figure out what went wrong. Next up, we have an awesome squaring shortcut. Okay, for our next trick, I'm gonna go through a pretty neat way to quickly find the result of squaring a number that ends in five. The formula is simple. Here are the steps. First, you take the first digit of the number you are squaring and increase it by one. Next step, take the result of step one and multiply it by that original first digit. Finally, you're gonna put 25 at the end. Just stick 25 to the end of the result in step two and you're done. At this point, you might be feeling a little bit confused and that is totally understandable. This is going to make a lot more sense with an example. So let's do that. 25 squared. Let's work through step one. Take the first digit of the number you are squaring and increase it by one. Two plus one is three. 
right? Our original digit was two, the original first digit in 25, two, and once we add one to it, we have three. Now we can already move on to our next step, and that is taking the result of step one and multiplying it by the original first digit. So we need to multiply two times three, and that's gonna give us six. All right, and now we are already on to our final step. Now remember, the final step is just to tack 25 onto the result of step two. So once we stick 25 to the end of the result in step two, we're done. The result of step two was six, we're gonna stick 25 onto it, and now we have 625, and we just figured out a quick way to figure out what 25 squared is. And this will work with all numbers that you're squaring that end in five. I think you're ready to give it a try. Now it's your turn, 45 squared. Pause the video and see if you can work out 45 squared. Remember to use the trick. All right, welcome back. You should have 2025. Did you get it? Take the first digit of the number you were squaring and increase it by one. In this case, four plus one's gonna give us five. Second step, take the result of step one and multiply it by the original first digit. So that's four times five, giving us 20. Now we just need to tack 25 onto 20, giving us 2,025. If you got it, nicely done. If not, again, go back and check your arithmetic steps, check the steps of the formula you to see where it is that you might've gotten off track. Finally, and for our last mental math trick, we are gonna talk about percent shortcuts. All right, we have come to our final mental math trick. That is using 10%, 5%, and 1% to find more complex percentages quickly. This is an essential shortcut because the GRE loves percent problems. This shortcut is based on knowing a little bit about decimal places and that moving the decimal one place to the left will result in 10% of a value and moving the decimal two places to the left will result in 1% of the value. Here is a quick example of that. Let's say we have 500. If we want 10% of 500, we move the decimal one place to the left. If we want 1% of 500, we move the decimal two places to the left. And we can see that 1% of 500 is five, 10% of 500 is 50. So let's see how this concept can streamline our approach to percent problems. Let's say that we needed to find 15% of 200. Well, the best way to go about this, the most efficient way is to break it up. Start by calculating the much easier 10% which is going to be 20. Then to find 5%, we just have to divide the result of 10%, 20 by two. So 10% of 200 is 20, 5% of 200 is 10. If we add that five and 10% together, that's gonna give us 15%. So 15% is 10 plus 20, which is 30. Therefore, 15% of 200 is 30. We found that answer by breaking it up. Let's check out another one. What is 32% of 200? Again, we're going to break it up. We know that 10% of 200 is 20 and 30% is just going to be 10% three times. So that means 30% is three times 20 or 60. To figure out the rest, we just need to move the decimal two places to the left to determine 1% of 200 is, and that's going to equal two. Now to get 2%, we just have to double 1%. So that's going to give us four. We have all of our pieces and we just need to add them together for our result. So 32%, that is 30% plus 2%. And if we break that into values, that is going to be 60 plus four or 64. Now, here's one for you to try. What is 35% of 160? Pause the video to try to use the shortcut to determine quickly 35% of 160. Welcome back. You should have arrived at 56. Did you figure it out? 10% of 160 is 16. 30% is just gonna be 10% three times. So that'll give you 38. And then 5% is eight. So 35% is just adding 5% and 30% together. So eight plus 48 is gonna give us 56. 35% of 160 is 56. If you got 56, awesome job. If you use the technique to get 56, even better, 
If you made a mistake, go back and check your arithmetic. And there you have it, four fantastic mental math tricks that, by leveling down the complexity of the problems, can help you work through the steps much more efficiently. I cannot overstress how important it is to have time-saving techniques at the ready when you are navigating through the Jerry math section. And that's especially true if math is not your strong suit. Not only will knowing these techniques help build your overall math confidence, but they will also have you reaching for the GRE calculator a lot less frequently. The GRE calculator is a great tool, but it is a tool that when used too heavily can actually hurt more than help your overall pacing strategy. Ultimately, the more you practice these techniques, the more adept you'll become at spotting opportunities to use them. So keep your eyes peeled for these and other mental math tricks that will help you quickly solve those GRE math problems. Thanks for watching.